Is there anything left for the American people to decide other than their personal lives? Is there anything left? Let us not mistake personal freedom for civic freedom. We have a lot of personal freedom in this country. So do people in dictatorships. Not as much as we, but as long as they keep their nose out of politics, they have quite a bit of personal freedom. And so do we. For example, we can eat what we want, date who we want, marry who we want, divorce who we want, pretty much work where we want, travel where we want, have the hobbies that we want. We can turn TV sets or have the clicker, switch channels anytime we want. We can push buttons on computers and get any kind of video game we want to play with. We can download whatever songs we want. We can even get into a 4,000 pound car and go three blocks to buy chiclets if we want. <laughs> let us not mistake, let us not mistake personal freedom with civic freedom. Marcus Cicero described freedom as participation in power. That's civic freedom. Civic freedom is being able to decide how our food is produced and what's put in them before they come to our dinner table. They can dis civic freedom decides how fast we want to clean the air and the water, how long we want to allow agribusiness to trample on small farmers. Civic freedom means we can decide whether or not we're going to invade countries and not let a criminal recidivist in the White House, the most multiply impeachable president in American history, decide for us with the complicity of both parties in Congress who unconstitutionally gave him the authority to decide when and how to invade Iraq. It's the Congress's constitutional obligation to declare war not the president's. It's civic freedom that can decide how to liberate our students, how to decorporatize our universities. Civic freedom that decides that we're not going to let our, our money be controlled by credit card companies and debit card companies who can penalize us and overcharge us and retroactively surcharge us. And we can't do anything about it because they debit our money instantly and if we complain and complain, they say, you better not complain. We're going to reduce your credit score. Your credit rating will be affected. They are stuffing us with that kind of power. They are silencing us. Civic freedom would say, we're going to control. We are going to control our money. Civic freedom would say, we're going to control what we own as a commonwealth the public lands with all the minerals, one-third of America. We're going to control the public airways, which we own. We're the landlords, the radio and TV stations, are the tenants. They pay us no rent. Do you realize that? Since 1927 Radio Act, they have paid us no rent for one of the most valuable public assets in the history of the country. And we don't even have our own radio and TV stations or networks, which we could have because we own them. We could say, give us back a couple hours, drive time, time, radio, TV, prime time, drive time. We're going to charge you rent, radio and TV stations, and we're going to use some of that rent to have nice production facilities so that those young people going into journalism can actually practice it and provide us with a communication system worthy of a vigorous democratic society unburdened by the censorship of advertisements emanating from Madison Avenue. That's what civic freedom does. Civic freedom would never allow our tax dollars to discover and test new pharmaceuticals and then give them away to one or other giant drug companies under monopoly marketing agreements with no price, reasonable price provisions. Imagine a woman who wrote us in 2000. She had lost her job because she was sick with ovarian cancer at age 52. She was making $19,000 a year. And of course, she lost her health insurance. She went to a doctor for an exam. He said, it's very serious. All I can recommend is a drug Taxol. 
And she said, how much? And he said, $14,000 for six treatments. Bristol Myers Squibb. Well, she wanted to know why. And we informed her that 31 million taxpayer dollars at the National Cancer Institute discovered and tested in human cl critical clinical trials, tax all. And under government policy, de de Democrat Party, Republican, doesn't matter, they have to give monopoly marketing rights to a major drug company. And they gave it to Bristol Myers Squibb. And Bristol Myers Squibb made people pay through the nose. And the profits were not shared with the National Institutes of Health. No royalties. That's what happens. With many of the drugs that are discovered with tax dollars and that the drug companies lie about in their ads is if they discovered them with their R&D, and that's why they have to charge you the highest drug prices in the world after we give them tax credits and free research and development to the clinical testing level. That's what civic freedom can stop. So when you go and you say to someone, as we all do, day after day, hello, how are you? And people tell the truth or they lie. They can be sick, okay, I'm okay, fine, how are you, fine. Why don't we revolutionize the salutations? Why don't we say to people, hello, how's your civic life? Try that with someone. Hi, how's your civic life? Watch the expression. After a while, maybe they'll start saying, robust. <laughs> maybe they'll start saying, great, how's yours? Let's exchange narratives of our civic life. 